without systematic approach, there is no science. Without science, there is no systematic approach. One who knows that science is the systematic approach to learning and working, he is the scientist. Thousands of years ago, the sages and scholars of India explored the realms of earth, fire, water, air and space. Their experiments were based on a combination of pure science and theology. Their discoveries, deductions and inventions have been left for succeeding generations in a vast body of literature which include the Vedas, the Upanishads and the Puranas. Ancient Indian technology cannot be dated. According to a few rare manuscripts, metallurgy was one of the earliest sciences to be developed on the subcontinent. Ancient laboratories developed metals with unique corrosion resistant properties, not just for making handicrafts, but also to create instruments and tools for further scientific research. Traditional Indian medical science's greatest contribution to the world has been its humaneness. Charaka, the founding father of Indian medicine, paints a vitriolic pen picture of those doctors who exploit their patients only for money. And he contrasts them with other medics who have a humane approach to their patients, who treat them like their father or their mother or their brother. Charaka asks, why must a man be healthy? And answers, because he serves his fellow beings better. The health of a society was seen to be reflected in the health of the individual. Ayurveda recognized health as being of the body, mind and soul. In the field of pure medicine, the sage Sushruta is known to have developed and used rhinoplasty. He worked with 125 kinds of surgical instruments and he performed amputations, caesareans and cranial surgeries. All this in 600 BC. At the same time, Atreya compiled the Charaka Samhita, the most referred to book on Ayurvedic medicine. Weights and measures unearthed during excavations are proof enough that our ancestors were capable of minute calculations. Aryabhat calculated pi to four decimal places and contributed the concept of zero. The pursuit of knowledge continued in various directions Astronomy became a major intellectual preoccupation. Keen observers as they were, the Vedic priests had an adequate knowledge of the course of the sun, the path and the phases of the moon, the bright wandering objects of the planets, the starry firmament, the occurrence of eclipses and the like. A thousand years before Copernicus, Aryabhat stated that the earth revolved around the sun. Centuries before Newton, Bhaskaracharya in his Surya Siddhant noted that objects fall to the earth due to a force of attraction by the earth. Science and theology also form the base for Vastu Shastra or the science of construction. The Mughals brought traditional beauty and symmetry into architecture. Each monument was a tribute to the monarch. Their forts were built with geometrical precision. Mohenjo-daro and Harappa were cities built for the people, absolute masterpieces of urban planning. Indian temples are the greatest symbols of the deep faith that inspired science. The 20 temples of Khajuraho were meant to replicate the Himalayan peaks where the gods dwell. On a desolate coastal spot, on the seashore of Orissa in eastern India lie the remains of one of the greatest temples in the world, Konark, a world heritage site. Konark means the angle of the sun. And it is said that the rays of the sun pass through the dance hall, pass through the audience hall, and strike upon the face of the sun god in the main temple. The 12th century Spanish science historian, Sayyid Andalucci, gave first place to India for scientific development among the early great civilizations. His reason, India developed science with wisdom. There is a wealth of ancient literature waiting to be deciphered, waiting to be used. 
vast funds of knowledge that will open long forgotten paths and restore faith and pride in our own abilities.